Ciao a tutti, and welcome to another episode of The History Of. In this one, we'll be doing another first and covering a uniform of a specific military unit, well, actually that of an entire nation's military. Today, we'll be covering the uniforms of the Pontifical Swiss Guard. As there is much history behind the Swiss Guard, we'll primarily be covering the modern uniforms rather than their entire 500 year plus history. Even with the focus being on the modern uniforms, this one is going to be on the longer side. So in the description below, you can find times for specific uniforms if you need to jump around. So let's start it up. So first things first, what is the Pontifical Swiss Guard? Well, simply put, they are both the personal bodyguards of the Pope and essentially the de facto military of the Vatican City State. So that leads us to the more pressing question of why do Swiss soldiers guard the Vatican? Well, without a huge history lesson, the quick answer is simple. Swiss warriors for a long time were considered among the best in all of Europe. Starting in the time of ancient Rome, the people of the Swiss Plateau, or Helvetians, were considered to be some of the most effective fighting people and even managed to win a few battles against Roman forces. Fast forward to the late 1400s, the era of the Holy Roman Empire under the Habsburgs. The Swiss cantons, cantons meaning basically regions or districts, began resisting their rule. After a brief war, the Swiss were successfully able to defeat the Habsburgs and gain their independence from the empire. So with all these skilled warriors now living in a self-autonomous, peaceful nation, what are they to do? Simple mercenary work. And so in the warmer months, they would go off and join armies and return home in the colder ones. So how does the Vatican and Catholicism factor in? Well, on January 22nd, 1506, a group of 150 Swiss mercenaries entered the Vatican for the first time. Although an alliance had been formed with the Swiss Confederation a few years prior, this was the first time troops actually entered the Vatican. It was then they were blessed by Pope Julius II and from there on out became the official guardsmen of the Pope and the Vatican. After that, Swiss guards and Swiss military units became a popular thing among various European nations for the next few centuries. Eventually though, Switzerland outlawed the practice with the exception of the Pontifical Swiss Guard. So with that little history lesson out of the way, we can get into the actual uniforms and gear worn by them. Today, the Swiss Guard wear a number of uniforms, ranging from duty uniforms to regular black suits, much like ones that would be seen being worn by various protection details. But before we get into those, let's actually go back a little bit to cover the actual creation of that one uniform everyone is so familiar with. The one with the vibrant colors. The one with that very... Interesting design. The Gala uniform. Much like the majority of fighting forces throughout Europe, the Swiss guards wore an assortment of garments and armor with very little to discern themselves as members of their unit. The only major shared aspects were the crest of the Papal States, along with the colors yellow, blue, and red. Yellow and blue were first introduced to represent the Della Rovere family, of which Pope Julius II was a part of. Red was added shortly after to represent the Medici family, which colors were red, yellow, and blue. With a rocky history of being constantly disbanded or dissolved and re-established, the Swiss Guard saw quite a few changes through the centuries, but one of its most significant came with its reinstatement in 1849. It was at this time the status of the unit fell into something of a low point, with poor recruitment standards, leadership, and discipline. Enter Jules Ripond, a strict Swiss colonel who in 1910 was appointed as Commandant of the Swiss Guard. Noting the state of the Guard, Ripond immediately began to return the unit to its former glory. Apart from bringing back the requirement that Swiss guardsmen should actually be from Switzerland, as well as instituting new and stricter rules to the unit, Rapond also helped bring about the modern day uniforms of the Swiss guard that everyone is so familiar with. The most significant of these, you guessed it, the Gala uniform. Thought by many to have been designed by Michelangelo way back in the 1500s, these uniforms actually didn't appear to the public until May 6, 1915, during the Feast of the Pontifical Swiss Guard, the yearly event to swear in new guards, as well as to commemorate the ones who died in defense of the Vatican during the sack of Rome in 1527. After poring over various references, texts, and artwork such as paintings and frescoes seen throughout the Vatican City from famous artists such as Jacopo Coppi, Michelangelo, and Raphael, Ripond took the styles and colors and created a uniform that successfully emulated the cut and look of Renaissance era uniforms. Though these uniforms have changed slightly in their hundred plus years of service, such as updated fabric and the introduction of zippers, 
they have mostly stayed the same. These are primarily worn during special occasions such as greeting visiting heads of state and other VIPs, honor guard duties, and at certain posts around the city. There are four versions of the gala uniform worn by different individuals. You have the halberdier, or standard guardsmen, drummers, sergeants, and officers. From the top, the halberdier uniform consists of a black basque style beret, which showcases the wearer's rank, a rather interesting tunic which boasts a white high collar, a yellow and blue torso section, and red sleeves, which are broken up by yellow and blue bands of cloth that are attached at the shoulder and elbow. Matching pants, which much like the tunic, are all red and have yellow and blue bands attached at both the waist and ankles. A brown leather belt, which sports cursive spelling out GSP on its buckle, which stands for Guardia Svizzera Pontifica, which is Italian for Pontifical Swiss Guard. On the belt will hang a short dress sword with an S-shaped handguard, gaiters consisting of the same color as the tunic and pants, and finally black ankle high shoes. The next version is seen worn by the drummers. Nearly identical to the standard version, these uniforms replace every instance of red with black, as well as include a leather cross belt sheath to hold their drumsticks. Now onto the sergeant version of the gala, which are the same cut as the halberdiers and drummers, but differ in a few ways, such as color. Starting with the tunic, the sleeves are the same red color, but the bands are a solid black. The pants are the same story, but instead the bands are now red and are adorned with a darker red material on each side. Additionally, their belts and sheaths are black instead of the standard brown. Finally, rather than wearing matching gaiters, they wear solid red ankle high socks and slightly lower cut shoes. Moving up now, you have the Captains, Majors, Vice Commandant, and Commandant of the Guard. Their uniforms appear slightly similar in cut, but are actually quite different upon closer inspection. Right off the bat, you can see that they boast a darker red and a more gold than yellow color. Their tunics are made up of velvet, have a more traditional folded collar, a nearly all red torso section, and much like the standard gala tunic, include solid colored sleeves, in this case gold, with red bands connected at the shoulders and elbow. However, these bands are fewer in number and generally wider, being tighter and connected to one another by horizontal straps. Finally, they also incorporate red and yellow piping along many edges. As for the belt, theirs are thinner in size, more intricate, and include a sheath for a longer rapier sword. Their pants are vastly different than the standard gala, as they are all red and share the same piping as the tunic. Much like the sergeants, they wear knee-high socks, purple in this case, and finally wear similar shoes to them, which have tongues that move up the front and back of their lower legs. Both the shoes and socks are then sometimes adorned with red and gold cockades. During special occasions and events, guardsmen will alter their gala uniforms with a few changes. The most subtle is that of white gloves, which are worn during certain public appearances and at special events. The main one, though, is the inclusion of a cuirass, or half armor, which can be seen during swearing-in ceremonies, Christmas, and Easter. The addition of a French rough style collar will also be worn with the armor as well as without during certain events. The only sets of armor that are different from the standard are that of the Sergeant Major, which includes a gold design made up of six circles in the shape of a V located on the chest, and that of the Vice Commandant and Commandant, which are vastly more detailed and darker in appearance. With a mix of dark gray and gold, the armor of the Commandants are accentuated by a more noticeable design fabric lining the arms and torso, and include an attached skirt at the bottom. The last noticeable varying piece of their uniform is that of the Morion helmet. These Morions, which originated from Spain, are essentially open face helmets which flare out on both the front and back. In most instances where symbols are present, they will be seen on the sides. In the case of the Pontifical Swiss Guard, their Morions are seen in two versions. Black, for less significant events and occasions, and a polished silver for highly significant ones. Both include an oak tree which was the crest of the Della Rovere family. Interestingly enough, in January 2019, the Guard began receiving newly developed PVC plastic helmets, which were actually copied from an original 16th century helmet and 3D printed. These helmets, which as of right now are only replacing the black ones, are being phased in for a variety of reasons. The first being uniformity, in the sense that the current helmets were all made over the course of 500 years and vary in look and condition. Next is weight, as the average metal helmet weighs about 4.5 pounds versus the plastic which weighs 1 and a fourth. Plus, breathability and heat, as the hot Italian summers can cause wearers of metal ones to sweat excessively and even burn their skin, 
The new plastic ones include hidden air vents and do not retain heat nearly as much. And finally, cost and construction time. As new metal helmets are specially made in Austria and take roughly five days to make versus the 3D printed ones, which take about 14 hours. Regardless of material though, these Morion helmets are very often accompanied by ostrich feathers of various colors to denote different ranks, which are black and yellow for drummers, which are always worn on the black helmets, red for halberdiers, purple, which actually appears as a darker red for the captains, majors, and vice commandant, and white for the sergeant major and commandant of the Swiss Guard. Now that covers the gala uniform, but there is also their exercise uniform, also referred to as the duty uniform, which is often worn for less significant tasks, such as training, night duty, and guarding certain entrances where the gala uniform may distract people or drivers. This one consists of the same black beret, a solid blue tunic and pants in the same cut as the gala, minus the vibrant colors and ribbons. Apart from the color, the only difference with the tunic is the inclusion of a slightly larger flared collar, two belts worn at different times, one being a solid brown belt with an open face buckle, and the other a black one with the same gala buckle. And finally, black shoes, similar to the ones seen with the gala uniform, but now accompanied by dark blue socks. The Commandant seem to also have a duty style uniform which is worn during drills and for more everyday tasks. Consisting of a basic blue tunic and pants, this uniform is identified by its more official cut. The tunic sports two chest pockets, their rank seen on shoulder boards, and elongated collar tabs. With this uniform, officer knee-high boots are worn. Over both the gala and exercise uniform, guardsmen will occasionally wear a mantle, otherwise known as a cloak. There are two versions, a larger one for when it's raining, and a slightly smaller sleeveless version which appears to be worn at night and in colder temperatures, which includes three blue sets of tied ropes on either side. Ones worn by officers will have a buttoned front, a collar, and include a dark red lining. Another uniform worn by officers is that of the representation uniform. These would be the closest thing to a dress uniform, as they're often worn for more formal functions that aren't necessarily related to the Vatican or Catholic Church, such as PR events, meetings with military officials from other countries, dances, and other high-end events. Taking inspiration from French designs, it incorporates a double-breasted front closure with rank collar tabs, basic pressed trousers, a kepi hat, and sometimes peaked cap, both of which showcase a pin of the Vatican's crest on the front. Next up is their newest one, the training uniform. With it first appearing sometime around 2017, the uniform seems to be only worn in certain areas of the Vatican and Switzerland. Not to be confused with the exercise uniform, this ensemble is worn by guardsmen participating in various exercises relating to modern day training, such as shooting, VIP escort, self-defense, and general activities that would be considered more tactical. Oh, and there is one final uniform, their protection detail one, which is essentially a white button-up and a black suit with a tie that sports a pin of the same GSP script seen on the gala belts. So some of you may be wondering, how can you get your hands on these uniforms? Well, you can't, at least not official ones. As new recruits join the guard, their uniforms are personally made by the Vatican's tailor, who also creates the garments for other church officials, such as cardinals and bishops. These all go on to be individually blessed by the Pope. Other pieces such as socks, shoes, armor, and helmets are all especially made for them as well, through a variety of makers throughout Europe. Once a guard's enlistment is completed and they decide to leave the force, the uniform, with the exception of armor, helmets, and weapons, are almost always destroyed, with the rare exception where they are preserved in the Vatican archives or put on display at a museum. And with that, we've covered the rather extensive history of the Pontifical Swiss Guard's modern uniforms. That was quite a lot of information and uniform hopping, but hopefully this has answered some questions people may have had, or was at least entertaining. As we always say, be sure to subscribe or check back soon for more videos right here on Uniform History.